Thank you for recommending the uh, uh -huh. conference in Tainan yeah. last time. That was, that was uh, should I wear a mask? Uh, I mean, it's up to you. I'm going to wear a mask. Okay. <laughs> I'll wear a mask. I'll wear a mask. Yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah. that, that, was, that was fun. I got a lot of good ideas uh, uh -huh. for, for the projects that I'm working on. So. Excellent. That was, that was great. Um, so last time we spoke, uh -huh. um, I mentioned I was working on a project where I wanted to visualize hiking safety data. That's right. Um, and you recommended that I make a data request uh -huh. to the, um, whatever that website was. Well, that, that request was rejected. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Uh -huh. And maybe I can just send you. Is there a reason for it? There is, but I'm not sure I completely understand it. Um, okay. Maybe, can I just forward you the? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, the case number. Okay. Really, all I need is the case number. I just have the email saying it was rejected. Can I just forward that? Sure, 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 forward it. Okay, that should be. I don't have internet here. Okay. Which ministry respond to interior? It was the Ministry of Interior, okay. Fire Department that responded. Fire Department? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. All right, that should be sent out. Okay, let's see what the firefighters have to say. <laughs> uh, looks like it's a legal issue. Okay, I, I've yet to receive the email. So. Waiting for the busy postal workers, I'm sure. Mm. Running, running from the Yeah, I, I know. IP over carrier pigeons. Uh, I got it. Okay. So let's look at it. Um, but there's, there's actually, there's actually, um, it's a partial yes. It's a partial yes, okay. It really is a partial yes. That's uh, promising. And uh, basically it says, we're not sure if just by simply removing the names we can completely de-identify the individuals involved in accidents. I see. Okay. That's, that, that was that's what they're saying. Okay. That's what they're saying. Um, and they have the data. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have the capacity to de-identify the data. Okay. It's just they're not sure how much the identification is required. <laughs> okay. Right. So, so, so then how, how, how do they become sure how much I identification is, is required. For example, if you limit your request mm -hmm. to uh, year and uh, longitude and latitude, mm -hmm. I'm sure that they can say yes right away. Because okay. there's no way that using just these three fields, you can re-identify anyone. Okay. But you said age, injury, yeah. cause. Yeah. Now they're not quite sure if publishing those and hiding the name. Uh, there's no possibility of re-identifying the name. I see. Because if you happen to be a medical worker and you're nearby a hospital, right. that probably is sufficient uh, for them to learn that, oh, it's a hiking accident. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if I submit another request and I say, like, just by month summarize the data, that should maybe go through. Exactly, exactly. And, and, and there's also a link. It's bas basically a part of that email. Um, that says uh, you can score, right? Score the response. Okay. So if you um, score um, two star or one star, <laughs> um, then they are required to follow up. Really? Yes. It, it, it says so. It says so. Um, it, if you read the email, the, the, there's a link okay. um, to the user score suggest. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, okay. and, and that says, if within seven days you rate it two star or one star, uh, with a good enough reason, uh, then they're required to respond uh, like as fast as possible. Okay, 
I think seven days has passed, but I can just submit another one as well. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. That's great. Okay, thank you. For yeah, so maybe you can make a new one because yeah, uh, sh right. It, it's not December fifteenth now, right? It's past <laughs> December fifteen now. Otherwise, I, I mean, but next time you know, okay. like like you receive a response of this shape, if you respond within a week, then the same person is required to reply to you as soon as possible. Okay, that's good. Now yeah. I'll keep that in mind. Okay, great. I'll, I'll try that one again. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about today is sure. I am concerned about the um, ARC ID number format change happening next month. Uh huh. Um, okay. Just, just because I I feel like it's going to create problems. To to what? I feel like it's going to create problems. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, so so basically, um, you know. The idea is that is that each of you now have two numbers. <laughs> yeah, but you know they're replacing the letter with an eight or a nine, right? That's right. Um, and and the reason they get for this is they're saying it makes it easier to use online services because it's the same as the Taiwan ID number. Um, but it's the thing is that is not exactly the same, right? The Taiwan ID number has a one or a two for the second digit. Yeah, um, but but the checksum uh, would be the same. The, the checksum will be the same, um, but basically I went through and I looked at. Um, all the libraries on GitHub that deal with yeah we're we're quite aware of that ID validation we are quite aware of that yeah. okay yes um, and it, it just it doesn't it doesn't look good for now mm -hmm. uh, for the support so so I guess my my question is um, like when the decision for this policy change happened um, like were people in technology involved were people mm -hmm. in the foreign community involved yes and they express these concerns? And yes. Okay. They, so they say a, a few things. One, that in schema.gov.tw, mm -hmm. there should be explicitly a regular expression that recognizes the, the old as well as the new uh, okay. NRC numbers. But because at, at this very moment, um, schema.gov.tw, mm -hmm. there's this. Yeah. And so everybody codes um, following this. Right? That this is actually the root of the problem. Uh -huh. Yeah, because if you just code toward these, neither the old or the new ARC numbers are going to work. I see. And this schema that got FTW, is this is this something that like government websites are required to follow? Yeah, it's binding. It's binding. It's binding. Ah, okay. So the, the contractors are supposed to follow, and if they don't, uh, it's actually discrimination. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's that's interesting. Um, so I'm I'm still a little bit confused as. To like some government services still do not accept the ARC numbers as well. Like for instance, like the the highway police yeah. reporting, you know, yeah. after yeah. Yeah. Um, So why, you know, if, if they're legally required to follow these formats, why? Because this hasn't been updated. Okay. If you check the regular expression. I see. There's no eight or nine. Here. Um, I'm talking about even the old ARC numbers. I know, I know, but but years. but neither is the old ARC number here. So how does something get added to that? Um, the Ministry of Interior files a official request to the National Development Council. I see. As far as I understood, they filed it, and uh -huh. the NDC is now working on it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So as soon as this is updated, um, and uh, we had an internal discussion, and the MOI decided to also recognize the old one mm -hmm. because it's. Voluntary, right? Yeah. You you can choose to keep the old one. Oh. So so both need to be added uh, to schema gov tw, uh, and um, it's a it's an opportunity uh, for the library uh, makers uh, to update to accommodate both uh, versions. It, it's messy, but it beats the old way, which is like legally they are not required to recognize the ARC holders at all. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, that's it. that's that's good to know. Um, as as far as like private industry, but then it's not binding. It's it's not binding. <laughs> yeah. So so what kind of you know tool? I don't know, if there's a way to enforce it, or if there's just a way to encourage private companies to get on board. I don't know. You can give an award or something. <laughs> give or, an award for yeah, or the not. the other side, uh, social sanction or something. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Um, well, here's what I've done. So I've, I've created this website called identity.tw. Yay. Right? And it has, it has three things on it. It has an API uh -huh. that recognizes all ID formats that awesome. is free to use for anybody. Yay. 
Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's basically on like a Cloudflare node, so it's massively scalable. Anybody can mm -hmm. use it. Mm -hmm. um, and then also libraries for all the major software languages that, that recognize all three forms of ID numbers. Um, and then also like a transparency report that if someone finds a site that doesn't accept a certain ID number format, or somehow doesn't offer the same services based on your ID number, they can report it, and then mm -hmm. it gets published here. Okay. Um, right, um, so anyway. Um, that's, that's not quite what the schema says, though. It's not quite what the schema says. What, yeah. What do you mean? Um, because you're, you're um, let's see. I see. So, so you're, you're basically saying there may be the second digit may be 0 or 7 or 5. I guess that's fine. It's, yeah. yeah it's more I mean, inclusive. It's, it's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, 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 I don't, yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure to begin with why all these companies do ID number validation to begin with. Like, when I buy groceries online, why do I have to type in my ID number yeah, to do that? Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, so, I, so, you know, so, like, the goal is to, like, score companies based on how they handle ID numbers. Okay. And if you don't use ID numbers, you get an automatic A, because why, why do you need to use ID numbers? And that's what I you're totally support that position. Of cases. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, do you think this would be useful? Um, for I don't know, like encouraging companies, shaming companies that don't that don't you know accept certain people to use their services. Um, if there's any way I can make it more visible to people, I mean I, I have I have plans to translate this into Chinese and, and you know have a community section where people can submit their own cases and, and things like that. Um, but is this something that you know the government would be interested in picking up and, and publicizing? Or? Well, um, first of all, um, I, I think this uh, need to um, like be tested for cybersecurity stuff, mm -hmm. uh, like the JavaScript implementation. Yeah. Probably you want to turn ID into a string mm -hmm. before pulling to uppercase. Sure. Yeah. I mean, because I'm open. For, I'm open to. Yeah. For for some other objects, calling to uppercase may launch a missile or something. No, never mind. <laughs> 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 Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, the, like it's 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 all open source. It's on GitHub. Anybody who sees issues with it can sure, can sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah. But uh, submit uh, test cases. Yeah, but but on the other hand, the PHP one doesn't suffer from this because regular expression match works on anything in PHP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So so for it to actually be reference implementation, uh, there needs to be a essentially cybersecurity audit. Of okay. Sorts. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a community project right now, so if any auditing is happening, it's going to be coming from users. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, for this to be a uh, online service, mm -hmm. um, of course, you're going to log the IP uh, address of each requester. Uh, and so you will have a digital trail of which people uh, access which e-commerce services. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and that puts the personal data protection uh, burden on you. Okay. What, what do you mean I'd have to log the IP? Because currently it's V identity TW, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, from my uh, knowledge, there is actually a backend here. It's not completely serverless. Uh, like you're, you're not using a, a um, pound sign. Uh, you're using a question mark. Which means that there is a backend. Yeah, there is a backend. There's a server. Yeah, but then it's, it's in, running JavaScript. Right, and but in which case you have uh, a log of the timestamp IP as well as the ID number of the person accessing the service. Mm -hmm. These two combined, uh, you can find out which person purchased which e-commerce. I see. I see. Um, services. Okay. Right. So this is not still hosted. Is what I'm saying. This is not uh, something that runs in the airplane mode. Uh, yeah. And so therefore, you, you become uh, subject to the personal data protection law. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, ideally, of course, everyone can request a copy of uh, whichever log entries that 
that contain their ID number to it, according to our. Uh, actually, if they also is a EU citizen, then they can also request uh, more things under GDPR. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Um, even if you don't capture any logs, you, you can. But you can you can always request, and then request. you must answer again within a reasonable amount of like seven days, yeah, saying I'm you not keeping logs. logs or something like that. But okay. but then but then you have a duty to respond because we can prove that you are collecting this data. How can, how can you prove it's being collected? Uh, because it's sent to you. Oh, but if it's not being stored, then? Uh, who knows, right? So it, it falls upon you to, to prove it's to not prove that it's not being stored. That's right. So you'd have to submit your source code and everything. And exactly. Hmm. It's a lot of work. OK. I see. OK. Maybe it's best that it just kind of remains a community project for now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm all for reverse procurement. It's yeah. just that. Uh, this is a very sensitive topic right now okay. because people are, for example, pushing against OCSP and for CRL for precisely the same reason. Uh -huh. Because with the OCSP, you're essentially tracking people's movements across websites. But uh, for CRL, like uh, the uh, revoke list of the HTTPS uh, credentials or things like that, then it's uh, basically certificate authorities pushing out their revocations, right? So, so uh, the ah. certificate authority learns nothing about your behavior. Okay. But if it's online, if it's OCSP, then they learn everything about your behavior. And this is also why Cloudflare is now working on what they call oblivious DNS uh -huh. over HTTPS. Again, because they don't want to know your IP, but they can't prove it. So they have to work with a partner that will never collude with them. How does that work? Um, so basically, you encrypt a DNS query to Cloudflare uh -huh. through a proxy. Okay. So the proxy knows your IP, but not the payload. Cloudflare knows the payload, but not your IP. Uh -huh. So if they, the two of them never collude, then they don't have your, your identifiable information. Wow. Okay. That's. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of investment. Yes. There's <laughs> a lot of investment. Yeah. <laughs> No, this. I mean, these these are these are all good things to think about. I, di I didn't realize it was such a thorny issue. I, I just it, it, it's a really was. thorny issue. Yeah. yeah. If you if you Google for uh, well, search for C R Lite, C R L I T E, you will see some like really creative ways uh, to to fix these sort of problems. It's now in Mozilla Nightly. I'm using it. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll do some reading about this. Sure. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, so I guess for now I'll just keep this community project and, and then, um, you know, if it proves to be useful, then that's, that's great for people. Um, what else? Um, yeah, I guess, I guess my, like really my biggest concern is that my, there's, there's no enforcement mechanism for private companies. And it's, 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 it's just, it can be really frustrating sometimes. I know. Are there, you know, like plans to legislate, you know, like... But legislate what? Record expressions? Or just, you, you, you know, you can't discriminate services based on yeah. the format of someone's ID. But I mean, the, the ID number, really, the, the law uh, defines ID number as something that the state agency interacts with citizenry. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's not supposed to be used by the private sector if you look at the wording of the law. Yeah. But on the other hand, we didn't punish people using the ID number either because there's no law against that. So there's no law for that and there's no law against that. that that's our current situation. Okay. And, and so uh, what you're saying is essentially making the use of ID numbers a kind of license operation. Mm -hmm. But that will make, I don't know, all businesses Subject to subject to a license application process. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works. Yeah, no, that seems that seems overly complicated. That seems excessive. I mean, it just seems like a form. It just seems like a form of, of discrimination, really. It, it really is a form yeah. of discrimination. And, I mean, it I should be protected agree. by anti. Right. So, so on the other hand, maybe it's not uh, in the laws of ID numbers. Maybe it should be in the law of consumer protection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, like yeah. class actions. Or something like that, and, sure, and there is simple. there is actually a, a Formosa post uh -huh. uh, where uh, I raised this argument that you can use the complaint and mediation process in the Consumer Protection Act. Uh, I'm sending that to you. Okay. Like, 
now. Are we waiting for the pigeons? Oh, pigeons are here. Consumer Protection Act. Huh, interesting. And there's a complaint process for the Consumer Protection Act. Is, is that something that's available online, or does it have to be yeah, available? Yeah, 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 sure. We have the, the Consumer Protection Authority for that. Huh. Okay. And, and in a sense, I mean, you're doing business, so you are a consumer. Mm -hmm. what, what we don't have uh, is, for example, when you are entering a building, and they require you to show the ID number, you're not, in a strict sense, a consumer to that building. Mm -hmm. And so there's like very little what the existing legal process can do to, right. to that building's owner or, right. or to the guard guarding the building. On the other hand, you're talking about electronic transactions, uh, in which case you're probably a consumer, uh -huh. and in which case you're entitled for the Consumer Protection Act. Okay. Um, can, can you point me to where you file complaints sure, under, sure, sure, under sure. this act? Of course. I'm, I'm, I'm actually surprised that this hasn't been more popular as a way of I know. handling I know. I know. Uh, on the other hand, what, what we are doing now is new to the Consumer Protection Authority too. Mm -hmm. right? Because um, before, we had no schema of TW. You can't even say you're being discriminated against. <laughs> 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 right? And now, when schema of TW uh, is going to be updated like real soon now, uh, then once you have that, you have kind of evidence uh -huh. saying yeah. you know, the state protects three forms of ID numbers. Right. They are equally good. Right. Uh, and so you're obviously discriminating against the other two kinds of numbers. Okay. Uh, and then you can go to the CPC. That's perfect. That sounds great. And then hopefully they can set a precedent of actually enforcing these cases as well. Yeah, but, but the CPC is, is quite... Uh, quite rapid. They're, they're really good at uh, doing uh, real-time responses. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Maybe I'll submit one just to see. Right, just to just test to the see, case. To yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but wait we'll till the schema gov is updated. It should be like real soon now. Uh, once it's updated, I'll let you know. Pretty soon? Yeah. Like within the next month, month or so? Or so, so. yeah, of okay. course. Perfect. Um, then you sent me the link to Right, and, and we'll see how CPC feels about the online <laughs> uh, cases. If they're okay with enforcing online, because I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, the other businesses will follow suit quite quickly. That's great. That's great. Okay, that's, that's, that's really promising. Okay, I'll, I'll, give, this, I'll give this a shot. Um, that's, I mean, that's really what I wanted to talk about today. Yeah, sure. So thanks. Sure. I mean, the, the Formosa thread is, is a, a gold mine. There's all sorts of different uh, perspectives uh, on, on this sort of thing. So yeah. <laughs> feel free to work with the community. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the first time I've ever heard anyone refer to Formosa as a gold mine. OK. I mean, there are people holding gold cards, making it the gold mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. OK, perfect. OK, great. Well, then I'll. Um, I'll, I'll wrap things up. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. My pleasure. And enjoy the rest of your day. Yep. Have a good little time. <laughs>